Welcome back everyone to theCUBE studio here in Palo Alto, California for the Silicon Valley AI Infrastructure Leader Series, part of the CUBE and NYSE Wired program. Hope you Serenini is here. He's the CEO of Axiavro. Welcome to theCUBE, multiple startups. This is another startup, semiconductors. It's hot. Did I get the name right? Axi Axiato. Axiato. Axiato, perfect. First of all, thank you for having me guys. So we're in the seeing the biggest boom of semiconductors. Some people are late to the party. Some saw it early. Obviously, NVIDIA with the software. We see their stock. Chips are in high demand. Clustered systems. The infrastructure is all the rage right now. It feels like we're back in the 90s. Networking, storage, compute, compute yeah. devices. I mean, it's a hardware scenario. And it's kind of fun. Hardware's back. Yeah, definitely. And what's your take on the, on the market right now? How do you see it? So if you notice, as you talked about, you know, Glad to see the hardware is back, and especially semi is back. Uh, it's a cyclical life, right? When the compute needs a lot more needed, and all the use cases comes up, and then everybody invests in compute, then you need a networking. So it's cyclical goes, networking already reached out to 800 gigs and stuff, and the compute needed. Mm -hmm. I think x86 architecture reached out to the top, and that's what Jensen and NVIDIA is claiming, that obviously you need a different architecture for the compute side. Mm -hmm. That's where the accelerator computing com comes in. So we play in that game, so. You know, one of the things I love about this past year was, it was really the year where NVIDIA kind of flexed hard. Obviously Jensen was every single keynote we, we covered uh, in, his out, in his uniform, leather jacket and, and patented shoes. But the story was about how semiconductors are powering this new supercomputing democratization. It's a platform shift, new categories are emerging. What do you guys do? Explain what you guys were founded on, premise on, what your product you're building. You're in the middle of it because what's happening is the infrastructure's shifting, the market's shifting in there, the products are shifting, which means it's going to enable some disruption in a good way for new things to happen. Like we're seeing every vertical, data, security, um, applications are intelligent, all with generative AI. So everything above the infrastructure and the stack will change. Yeah. What, do you, what do you guys do? Give some context. So we are in the piece of the, one of that items you just talked about, security, cyber security. As we talked about the infrastructure is now, you know, rebuilding, completely renovated. And for that, you need a reinvented new accelerated computing based solutions mm -hmm. for the security also. Everybody under the sun today, security or cyber security means mm -hmm. uh, mostly software and they do on a, something called a port of entry, which is a bad actor coming into your system, so they are the gatekeepers of stopping. So any enterprise security, <laughs> any firewall security, all that is trying to stop the bad actor not coming into your system. Yeah. What we do is a ground up, we use this accelerated computing and AI driven solutions to, on the hardware solutions to detect these guys as a last line of defense, as a complementary for, for these guys. So we are the ones actually monitoring the hardware if somebody is taking over, generating the keys and all stuff. So we'll detect, we're the only company in the market can detect while you know, attack is happening, especially the ransomware type attacks. So what's more exciting, bungee jumping or starting a, doing a startup to solve security with silicon? Uh, we love, I love both. It's, <laughs> adre it's an adrenal for all of them. So you know, anything to do with adrenal, including the company, company work, that, that's, that's for me, so. Okay, so what are the salient aspects? You mentioned there's, there, it requires different thinking. Yeah. With AI. Can you can you give us the salient aspects of, of of how you're solving that problem? What are the critical components? So it's a simple. Our premises of the company is, if you look at the data center, there are two outside interfaces connected to the data center. One is called a data port, where the, you know your packets come in and go and access to the server. Second one is the control and management side. For last decade or so, uh, these are protected behind the firewall. Firewall is called a perimeter security. And unfortunately, that's only perimeter security. That's not good enough. So everybody under the sun for the last decade or so decided to build this something called DPUs, data processing units, which is a you know, big fat uh, processor as NPU style, checking the data port on that. But then the control and management port used to be sitting there only for the, your IT guy who has an access to this, who is sitting within the system, within the network. But you know, good or bad, pandemic and also AWS, now your IT guy is also on the cloud. Means people just connected your uh, you know, management port behind the same firewall or similar firewall. Our premises of the company, as an industry, we agreed that firewall is not good enough security for the data port. How in the world we are okay with the master control port is actually yeah. exposed under the same thing. So we built similar to DPU, is something called with TCUs, Trusted Compute mm -hmm. and Control Units, 
That uh, does a similar functionality what we're talking about, but with accelerated computing, not any more packet engines. It's pure AI engines to be able to detect what's happening, firewall capabilities onto that port. So basically, we reinvented that piece. So on the data port side, it's a modular card called NIC, Network Interface Cards. Yep. And on this mm -hmm. side, you can call it as a management NIC, yeah. but in industry as an open compute platform, everybody yeah. under the sun is part of that. Uh, decided that as a SEM, secure control module. So we make a single chip SEM. Okay, so you've got the, the, the perimeter, okay, that's check. You've also got the other end of the spectrum, whether it's Intel or AMD or AWS with doing confidential computing. Yeah. You guys are worried about the stuff in between. Is that true or? It's actually bottoms up. We're actually addresses and supports a confidential computing also. How, how so? Can you explain that? Like yeah. why do I need you guys if I'm already? So there are the two phases of confidential computing. One is basically looking on the you know trusted zones you built and all the stuff on yep. the application level. And what we do is on a hardware level. So when you turn on the system, we're the first ones to turn on. And we're the first one to you know, check the integrity of the system authenticate, attest whether it's in a hardware or software, including the other host systems, whether it's an x86 or a Grace from uh, yeah. uh, NVIDIA. So we authenticate and attest first, and then anything you connected, whether it's a DPU or whether an AI accelerator, whether it's any, anything you connected to, hardwares are all attested, authenticated by us. So we manage the keys and key management. We have a pr proprietary way of doing the keys, what something called used to be secure boot. We call that as a secure vault. By definition of the vault is simple. It's a vault, we never give any keys exposed to the outside. By doing that, yeah. you're basically eliminating any tampering of that. There are more, you know, we have around nine patents already approved for this one, how we do that and all that. So not only the boot time, we're able to check on all these things, also every firmware, every AI model you're running, every LLM running on the market, every virtual VMware, you know. You're VMware, locking it down. We need to be able to attest as a zero trust model. So we do support the zero trust, we do support the confidential computing. So we're not replacing any of these. We're augmenting all these things. So think like simple. Uh, I'll give you the general analogy what I use. In a normal movies you watch, in you know, a bank heist, somebody robbing the bank. So you have a security camera, somebody has to you know, get over those, and then you have doors or whatever, the locks has to be breaking over. Think like your hardware is nothing but a money chest in the bank, and then you have a doors and a locks outside, and then you have cameras. So these cameras are related to something in XDR services, or enterprise security software, whether it's Snowflake, CloudStrike, all that, that examples. And then the, you think about the door I refer to as a Palo Alto, which is a physical access door, which is the firewall for you. Once you broke those two, there's nothing to stop today. Or if your insider becomes a bad actor, there's nothing, none of these guys can yeah. do it. So we are right in front of that money chest and think like you know we are able to monitor what's happening on outside. We don't know who is doing it because we're on the hardware level. We cannot see the application, but we know that something is happening yeah. with our AI engines. When something is happening, you basically lock up better. Think like somebody breached the front door. You went into the bedroom and I lock up again and ask for help. Safe room. It's exactly. like a safe room. We are the safe. Exactly. <laughs> so we create that safe room with that. That nobody is going to come through, and you're not going to lose. And you can shut up. We can go to the granular level of this is. You know, think of a port level attack or whether a firmware level attack or whether it is in a virtual, what particular virtual machine itself, VM itself or an application itself or one particular user itself is to, or even one LLM model to be. So you do need all these LLMs to be authenticated, attestated. If a bad actor got the access to those and you got, everything is messed you up. You lock it down so no matter what the vulnerability is or what vector it takes, you can lock it down. We can lock, exactly. You know, this reminds me of, um, this last line of defense reminds me of what we saw on the internet recently, where that Microsoft engineer got suspicious over his SSH login, and he was totally nerd. It was like, it usually like takes 0.3 milliseconds uh, to log in, but it was 0 0.8, yeah. and he noticed how slow it was. It was actually, Somebody a hacker else. sitting there. Somebody else do it, yeah. And so if he doesn't stumble upon that, that's that famous XZ backdoor. Yes. So, okay, that's a great example of they're already in. Exactly. They're so this is exactly what we're talking about. Nobody in the world can right now can detect with our AI engines, we profile even insider attacks. Like if I'm, if I'm an IT guy, if I'm compromised, there's nothing any of these systems can do today. Mm -hmm. But whereas our system, if we deploy it, we have a profile in the user also. So behavior of, as an IT user, we will be able to go for multi-factor authentication, 
collect the forensic data. If I can't stop it, I'll be able to actually at least you know have a forensic Okay, Kofi, data. give us the secret sauce because Vault is a simple concept. We just oversimplified it probably, but I'm sure you got a lot of other things going on. Oh, the cameras are down, the Vault does that. I'm sure there's a lot of things are happening. Take us through the secret sauce. What's so, the secret sauce? Secret sauce, we built the custom engines inside. You know, every other interface on a chip is common for everybody, but the secret sauce, we have a four uh, individual one therapy AI engines inside. Each one does a certain function to be able to monitor. So without giving, revealing, you know, heavy details in here, <laughs> we Please. train, you know, each AI model to certain types of attacks, whether it's a side channel attack, so whether it is a supply chain attack, so whether it is a ransomware attack. Somebody, you know, what is a ransomware attack? Bad actor coming into your system, lock in your system with as a super user and ask for ransom, or encrypt the hard disk and then ask for ransom. In both cases, you're touching the, the section of the hardware what we're talking about. So we take every attack known in the market today, we run through that and build these hardware traces profiles, train our AI models for that. So you're looking for two types of basically fundamental. One is behavior learning. Any behavioral change happens, we look for a blacklisted pattern, which we train. We match to, if there is a hit, you stop it. Mm -hmm. If not, I collect the forensic data, go for a multi-factor authentication, look for outside, you know, somebody else. You can put a double authentication, somebody to stop that. Mm -hmm. So you can censor at the time, you can turn it to stop that action, isolate that to that particular user, particular port, particular operating system. So isolation, detection and isolation is the biggest problem. I've been into the financial market, Brian took us to, uh, everybody in, in New York in there. Everybody told one big thing. Detection and isolation of a problem is mm -hmm. the key thing. Today, it takes around 90 days. Yeah. Okay. Real. Yeah. We should be able to do it. In and that's America. because there's things that have not been seen yet. Yeah. There's, so there, That's always the blind spot. It's called zero-day attacks. And most of the time, true, there is no true zero-day attack. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Okay, nine out of the 10 times. So mostly the variance of something. So what we use our AI engines as a human detecting versus AI, in, these are neural engines, will be able to detect you know, further away in extrapolation of what attacks were trained already so we can detect something potentially with the future one. So you use AI to detect, for instance, a side channel attack and then you can lock it down with your TCU, exactly. is that right? Is exactly, that, sir. Yeah. It's in the hardware to be able to. We, we stop and we let the host CPU to know what's going on and you know, system vendor can decide you want to stop or isolate that too. And then we have more features in the rack itself, the complete level. Yeah. Uh, one, two features I'll talk about. One, we communicate between the rack, between the blades of the rack itself com continuously, so that if there is an attack happen or we detected something on a one particular thing, and then it's able to communicate through the top of the rack switch to everybody, then you can isolate. Basically, I'm telling everybody, I found something wrong in here. Hey, watch out for this. Yeah. So you quarantine yourself and letting everybody know on the spot itself, that's one. Two, as you know, the previous uh, speaker was talking about, about thermal. Yeah. Today, your fan controls on the data centers are all done based on the thermal sensor, how hot and cold gets it. What we can do, because we're sitting on the each blade, and we're also knowing every time there's a load on the system. Okay, we call that is a dynamic thermal management. So based on the load on the system and also thermal combinations, we can throttle the fans. With that, we can save 50% of the you know, your power efficiency on the fans. In net net, you know, eight cents on the dollar for the whole rack so you can save. And, and I get these, this, the silicon how? Through an OEM that basically adds it as a feature or do I buy something separate? How so we, we as a traditional model, a silicon vendor goes to an ODM, work with the ODM when any of the CSP or the OEM, CSP is in Google's of the world and OEM is Dell's of the world. Yep. Both of them goes to a Taiwan companies to make these manufacturing cards. Yep. So what we do is we enable every ODM in Taiwan, and then every OEM directly we work, and every CSP also. So we sell the card by itself because these AI models need to be trained, and we need to continue to modify that. Right. So we create a pool for the, all the end user like and enterprises, what they needed to, but then the buying is not enterprise. Buying comes from an OEM or ODM or CSP. And they pop it in. They pop it in. And then that's a feature that they can. It's optional. Look, you have a discrete, we re, this chip replaces like four or five chips on the board today, what is being used. Some kind of addressing the four or five chips together, we replace that into single chip. It, and they can either charge for that or they can use it to, to, to differentiate from their competition. Yeah, we're not, yeah, I mean, yeah. as a startup company, we're not going to come up with a cheaper solution. It's, yeah. uh, it's a okay. superset. We have a more, a lot it's more. A better mousetrap. 
It's yeah. a better security solution. It's uh, one third of the physical size compared to, and one third of the power, and 20x powerful and what do we give on top of his AI CPU. Well, the value proposition, root of trust, you get the last mile defense, yeah. uh, patents and technology, secret sauce there. Complete. So take us through as an entrepreneur, obviously you mentioned AI is driving this. What about this cycle of AI are you leveraging? Because a lot of entrepreneurs are out there right now seeing opportunities they couldn't get before. Yeah. What is gettable now that you're doing with AI and where is, where is the advantages it's going to come from with more better AI? Yeah, so the, everybody in the world right now doing something called a mainstream AI. Everybody's working on that piece to be. Mm -hmm. And for us to be able to take that AI functionality, like we use the chat GPT and all that to be functional calculation. And for that piece, before we need to do it ourselves, but today we can do that with uh, AI models that are already built. We can use that for security. So it makes us, I don't need to reinvent that side of the wheel, but use the application to specific security market. And in what foundry? How do, how do you make these? TSMC uh, foundry on this one, and we already shown in these systems, our cards plugged into all NVIDIA system at a GTC last year, this year, three months ago. And also at OCP, we announced with the multiple customers, and this is powered by us too also. So this is available, chip is made at TSMC, uh, cards made in TSMC too also, or uh, not, sorry, cards are made in Taiwan. Uh, but then we sell the card and chip board. That's company. great, okay, so you got TSMC, they got the capacity, it's not like the most advanced. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not, it's a 12 nanometer node. Uh, 12 nanometer, it, beautiful. Yeah, 12 nanometer, yeah. we're not on the bleeding edge of three nanometers, at the same time, we're not on the, uh, the completely outside of it. So we're somewhere- Kind of a sweet, sweet spot, actually, sweet spot, right? Because yeah, you can yeah. get capacity. Yeah, we don't have an issue on the capacity. Yeah. We are the one of the emerging companies for TSMC partnership, and they've been committed to us to do it, even during the, pandemic when it was tougher on the, and every supply issues, they took care of us. Gopi, talk about your journey as an entrepreneur. He's got a great story, obviously technical background, you built stuff from the day one, did some successful entrepreneurial ventures, sold the company to Qualcomm, you built the Wi-Fi mesh, which was very popular. Marbell. Love that, you're enabling a lot of value. People consider Wi-Fi in the hierarchy of needs, by the way, the next yeah, to shelter. So, was, so t take us through your journey. It's, uh, it's been 30 years. I think this is the 30th year for me. And uh, it's long, but I love it. And I always want to be an engineer. I want to be on a, you know, I went to a boarding school which has a military close by. You know, flights have been flying out of uh, thing and I want to be, everybody excited with the, how the, flight, the flights are taking off, et cetera. For me, it was how was they talking to each other? Where is the lane? Where is the route? Where do we need to go to point A to point B? That made me to, you know, focus on a, more interesting on a communication side, yeah. ended up being yeah. the wireless side and networking side, yeah. you know, before wireless it was the networking. And so this is my fourth startup and as a founder, second one, but then as a part of the early employees of that. And as you guys talked about, you know, yeah. great to be trained at uh, Marvell with Sahad and I respect those yeah. guys very well. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got trained there to be as engineering guy turned into the business guy and we did the NAS network attached store in their market, and Wi-Fi is also there too also. We yeah. did the you know, mobile routers to be in the yeah. market to be, and then you know, went out and started another company called Cloud Grapes, yeah. and which is a cloud transcoding company that's uh, exited yeah. properly too also. Then this mesh company yeah. sold to uh, Qualcomm and stayed in Qualcomm for long, yeah. ran their yeah. business from almost nothing to billion plus dollar business on that too. It's not just me. The yeah. same team has been following me. Yeah. I've been fortunate to that great team to be with me. Yeah. So it's exciting. When you talked about it, it's adrenal. You know, it's yeah. tough. <laughs> I, I can't. It's hard. I can't say it's hard. <laughs> I thought this one would be easier, but it's not. You know, yeah. we got hit on the pandemic and all that. But then, still, yeah. and when the day results comes up, and now we have a product, yeah. and customers are waiting for that, and biggest customer in the market, biggest evolution of AI, and which is NVIDIA, is looking at us as a partner in there, yeah. and you cannot ask for better. It's so a roller coaster. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. And, that, so, and people watching now, one of the things we talk about in theCUBE a lot, and that's why we love the community content we do, is there's a lot of young engineers coming in, and a lot of senior folks like us, because it's a systems revolution going yeah. on, right? It's, we're back. Yeah. And so there's a lot of opportunities. So what's your advice to folks out there building who see opportunity, Opportunity recognition, all entrepreneurs see it, but now we have new ways to get it, to capture it. There's new AI capabilities coming. What would be your advice to folks out there who are building and, and see an opportunity and want to seize it? So I'm a hardware guy. I'm going to stay with the hardware and system cool. side. And you know, obviously the AI applications are tremendous, outside yeah. applications for medical to everything. That's great. So I, I will stay away from that. Hardware side, 
all these applications are today, every time anything comes up, as you know, software can fix some problems and you can work around things like that, makes it a solution to me, but then you need to optimize to make it in hardware, just like the GPUs are, you know, accelerator computing coming and we are doing in hardware accelerator. Focus on that, there is a big gap and will be heavy demand for the world, I believe, as a firmware engineers, literally the guys who can do the kernel level coding. Right now, that's missing. Last decade has been. I think if you focus on that, yeah. that is the evergreen market for any, any engineers to work on that, especially with AI model. Not just running the AI models and the compilers and all that stuff, which has been, yeah, yeah. think about you building the compiler. That's the, that's the secret yeah. stuff. It's interesting, a lot of the AI companies that are doing well are going to the kernel. Yes. As close as possible. You have to be doing Physical it. level, I mean, this is the revolution. Yeah, and Oxyar is one of the many. It started on a focusing on security and hardware. Uh, we expect there will be more Oxyarders come up, and, and I would recommend people to come up and do this. This, is, yeah. this has been ignored. Everybody is going, going after mainstream AI, but then just slap in the, your security. When you call up for a security bigger, you better pay attention to the ground up build. This is like band-aid solution so far. Yeah. And we, when we looked at it, it says, why? And how come this left over? Yeah. But that's, that's what in the world comes up. That's what the opportunity for startup yeah. we see is an opportunity. It's interesting, you, your unique background and, and pedigree is, and the focus on security is interesting because you know, security is a data problem, yeah. it's a network problem, it's a system problem. Yeah. So you're seeing the confluence of AI, not just about being a category of a one thing, it's a, it's threading a lot of things together. Everything's in, interplaying here. Yeah, it, it's like somebody invented a smartphone. You know, when smartphone was there, applications were coming on top to make a use, and some of those applications now become a default on the phone. It's the same way here. You have any computing power of AI, you make use of everything. And yeah. our olden days was a calculator. Yeah. I used to do the math and all the numbers <laughs> and fingers and all that, but not not anymore. Yeah. Your brain is used for something else. So there's a heavy computing is given to yeah. the industry. I think this is going to change the world for us and make life easier, win win better, life gets better from autonomous cars to anything. So. Well, we're glad what you're doing, what you're doing. We need more horsepower. Networking, storage, compute's going to change based on the applications, generate as a new category, it's platform shift. Yeah. And uh, congratulations on your new venture. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank okay, you we are here in again. Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. In our Palo Alto studios, Silicon Valley AI Infrastructure Leaders Program is part of theCUBE, plus the NYSE Wired Group here in Palo Alto, thanks for watching.